continue on the series on um, GDP and economics and jargon and terms. What are we going to learn here? We're going to about taxation. We're going to learn about taxation, direct taxes versus indirect taxes, the idea of progressive taxation, and what is GST all about. Direct taxes are taxes that are directly paid by individuals or corporate. So your income tax and corporate tax. So you make this much income, you calculate what taxes they are and pay them directly. That is direct taxes. Indirect taxes are on transactions which bear from the taxes not collected directly but indirectly. What is meant by that? You go buy a bottle of coke. On that coke transaction, is, there is a tax levied. That tax get effectively con collected by the merchant who is supplying you the coke. Who has collected, who is going, who's not going to directly pay this, but who has bought from somewhere and they remit the tax. So it is through a chain of events, finally it reaches the government. So your VAT, your service tax, all of those are indirect taxes. Income tax and corporate tax are direct taxes. So direct and indirect, not, not, not hugely different ideas but know what the funda means what the term means progressive taxation is an ideal which is just the person who earns more should pay more taxes that idea is called progressive taxation progressive taxation is can be implementable when it comes to direct taxes what do you mean by that someone earning six lakhs can pay some percentage of income as, as tax someone may earning 12 lakhs you can create a system where this person pays a higher percentage as tax overall. That's why we have the slabs for the first two and a half lakh, there are no taxes. Then for some, there's a small tax rate and the higher tax rate and a very high tax rate. That makes sure that as you earn more and more, a larger and larger share of your income gets paid as taxes. The rich pay more taxes. That idea is progressive. However, if Coke, a tax is levied on Coke through indirect taxation, you cannot say someone is buying a bottle of coke or oh, you seem to be a poor guy so we'll collect less tax from you. You are rich. We'll collect more tax on coke consumption from you. That's impossible. It's levied on a transaction on a good or a service that is bought. So that there the income level of the person buying cannot be featured. So that is not progressive. Direct taxes are generally progressive. Indirect taxes less so. Now what is this GST all about? Goods and services tax. Uh, lots of interesting stuff to read on it, to read up on it. I'm going to give you the broad outline, the theme. The GST idea is to create what is called as a unified market and create a simplification in our tax structure. So now we have central tax, sales tax, VAT, uh, Octroy, all kinds of silly frameworks are there where the taxation whenever goods travel from one state to another or taxation within a state when the good is brought in after processing. All of these complicate the tax structure. And very frequently, the tax offset is not available. What is this offset? Suppose some product is created for rupees 100. It's sold to the first person on the chain, the big wholesaler at 110. He sells it to the smaller wholesaler at 120, who sells to the retailer at 140, who then sells to you at 160. Technically speaking, on this, let's say there's a 10% tax. So you pay 10% of 160, 16 rupees. This is collected by the retailer. Now, he should not be expected to fork out 16 rupees as taxes because he makes only 20 rupees as profit. He buys at 140, he sells to you at 160. He should not be expected to pay 16 rupees. So what the government says, look, you pay 16 rupees. And then for you, this 120 is the input. On that 120, this person here should have technically paid 12 rupees of taxes. Give me that number. So you will say, I have to pay 16, but my supplier has already paid 12. Therefore, I'm netting it off and paying 4. This idea is called the idea of offset. Likewise, this guy will do the same thing. This guy will do the same thing. What that means is the 10% tax from 100 to 110, this guy pays 10% of 10 rupees, 10% of 10 rupees, 10% of 20 rupees. So you effectively end up paying only for the value you have added and not for the price that is transacted. That is the system, that is the script, that is the ideal. But the offsets are not synchronized. This could be one tax, this could be some other tax. The government will say this tax is not offsetable with this payment. So give me the whole money. 
So effectively, you're paying tax on tax. What will that lead to? This guy, he has to pay 16 rupees tax. He's not going to price at 160. He's going to price at 180. So the end price is higher. The collection becomes tougher. There are more tax evasion systems that come in. So the government is saying, we'll simplify everything. We'll have GST. Everything will be under one banner. There'll be what is called a CGST. CGST, SGST, and IGST. Central, state, and integrated. For transactions within a state, across two states, within a state, subsequently sold later on. So for all of these, there are different systems of, of computing. Read up on those. I'm just going to, as I said, I'm going to give only the broad overview. What is the... The, the all of the trade agreements that you hear about NAFTA, TPP, etc., etc., all of those are about one idea. There is reducing trade barriers worldwide. So India is a unified economy. The massive advantage of building a business in India is you build a business in India, not in in Karnataka or Assam or Tamil Nadu. So you don't have to worry about a tax burden of selling something in Maharashtra, even if you have produced the good in Tamil Nadu. So that's the beauty of having a large unified market. However, our states have imposed myriad taxes and made life difficult for each other. They're protecting their domains every now and then. And that increases the trade barriers of selling across the country. So this is about unifying the tax chain and saying, look, this is the system the entire country will follow. Don't You don't have any freedom to impose your own taxes in between this. What the center is telling the states. What will be the state's issues here? States will say, look, all this is fine, but if my revenue shrinks, then I cannot run my state. The government, central government is saying, look, we'll create a mechanism where your revenue, revenue of each state, the Tamil Nadu and Andhra and the Kerala and the Karnataka, will remain more or less the same. Whatever you are earning pre-GST, your income post-GST will continue to be like that. So don't worry, they're not taking money away from you. That's what the central government is trying to communicate. What if we bring all this and the central government loses money, where the entire country's tax revenue shrinks, and we can't run all our schemes. Well, they're doing a lot of computation, and then they're going to come up with what they call an RNR, revenue neutral rate. So whether the GST will be 18% or 19% or 20% will be based on that revenue neutral rate. So that the government revenue doesn't shrink, individual states revenues does not shrink. That is the idea here. We unify this, we simplify this, we provide offsets for everybody under one system. If once we implement this, tax evasion should reduce, consumer prices should be lower technically, but that may not happen. Taxing system could be simplified and trade barriers will be removed. So it sets up the economy, future growth. It's something that simplifies stuff. It's like cleaning up your house. It's not going to create new growth. It's a taxing system. It's not a silver bullet where it just says, oh, now GST is there, we'll grow faster. That won't happen, but it simplifies life. Right? We, even otherwise, India has a fairly onerous tax structure because our tax net is narrower, our tax rates are higher. The country is beginning to think about changing those. Hopefully, it will be in place where, where the few people who pay tax don't end up paying such extraordinary high amount of taxes, which is happening in India. So once the simplification is there and the net is broadened, maybe the tax rate can come lower. That'll be a good thing.